a lot of people ask how to connect with our spirit guides and I'm going to share with you the best ways to connect with your spirit guides in this video because once you do, there's no stopping you. I'm Nicole, founder of Spiritual Guidance Academy, where we help you master your spiritual gifts, hear from the Most High, and all about spiritual guidance. So, what are our spiritual guides? What is that? Well, these are energies that protect us, they provide answers for us, and they communicate with us in so many different ways. See, we are the soul within our human, and whether it be our ascended loved one who's reaching out to us, or an animal spirit guide that we see as a ladybug that has placed itself right on the key that you are about to put into the door of your car. Our spirit guides come with messages and it's important to know what those messages are in order to manifest, in order to just receive the answer of what is your next step, in order to just know that you're making the right choices in life, to know that you're honoring your intuition and not your fear. So the first way that our spirit guides reach out to us, or one of the ways, is through our dreams. See, you're the soul within your human. And in your dream, you get to go back home. That's right. Your home is not the third dimension that people call life. In fact, you don't even live in the third dimension. You live in the fourth dimension because you are a dual being and you are part human, but you are a soul first living a human experience. And so when you realize that you the soul came first, you realize that every time you get a good night's rest, you feel so much better and you're able to really approach your day totally different, approach a situation totally different and just renewed and restored because while your human is asleep in its fasting state, you are totally awake. And we've seen this proven. It has been measured scientifically in REM stages of sleep, rapid eye movement, where we are more active even than when we are in our wakeful state of living our day just going about life. So your eyes are the window to the soul. And during REM stages of sleep, your eyes are moving rapidly because you, my dear, are active in the spirit realm because you are back home. So you are communicating with our spirit guides while you are asleep. And those messages that you're receiving, you do carry them throughout your day. You do realize you just had a dream. Even if you say, well, I haven't dreamt in a while. I, I don't remember my dreams. It always happens. I never remember them. First of all, stop saying that you never remember them. It might be a challenge for you. But the truth is, you dream. But there's a block there that we need to work on to remove it so that you can communicate effectively and help your human carry out your spiritual guidance that you're receiving from your spirit guides while your human is asleep. See, that communication is not something that your human is readily comfortable with. So dream state is absolutely 
important for you to hear from your spirit guides. Another way we hear from our spirit guides is through nature. Make sure you have those plants around you. Make sure you're hugging trees. Make sure that you are out in nature, just enjoying the breeze, the rustling of the leaves, going for a hike, walking out in the in the forest woods safely, taking a walk around the block, standing outside, eating outside, just enjoying the wonderful mysteries of the universe outside of the four walls of a building, a home. And also be sure to be barefoot as often as possible, whether you're on a beach or on concrete, grass or sand. Try to be as barefoot as possible on the earth. Why is that? Well, the earth is our number one grounding resource and our spirit guide our angels, our ancestors in particular, reach out to us through nature. So when we're outside hugging trees, when we go by a bush and we hear our name being called in the wind, and we see these messages that seem to come out of the blue, they absolutely are meant to come at that time. And we are simply open to receiving from our spirit guide. Another way that our spirit guides reach out to us is through children. So those things that the children say that are filterless, oh honey, they were meant to say it. So the next time your children say something that you are totally struck by and totally embarrassed by or totally upset by, or oh my gosh, how could they say that? Don't they know how to, how to uh, teach their children not to talk like that? Trust me. The things that children say are filterless, but they are the closest to God. They are the closest to our spirit guides. They are very pure. They were very innocent, and they are very precious. Believe them, trust them, and when they say something, understand this. This is very important. They don't know that they're going to say it. They are simply being that obedient to the, to the message that they're receiving ultimately from God, divine source. And so when you look at a child's face and they look alarmed that they even just said what they said and you look at it as they know they're about to get in trouble they know that they're about to get in trouble yes but something in them felt so strong in them that they had to say the message they had to say it versus not so another way that our spirit guides reach out to us is in water now we talked about nature but I'm talking about in the shower in the bath, specifically washing your face, washing your hands, there is a connection between cleansing yourself and spirit. Godliness is next to cleanliness is very real. It's a very true statement that is passed down through generations. And what it means is when we prepare ourselves, our vessel, when we keep our home, our abode, in a clean, uncluttered, happy space, pleasant space that's welcoming to our spirit guides. It says, I appreciate you coming into my space. Let me prepare it for you. Think about it. If you looked at one house that was dilapidated, tore down, it just looked dangerous. It looked like if you even approached it, it might fall apart. 
and you just wonder what's inside of it. And then there's another house. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. You can't wait to go inside and you still wonder what's inside of it. Which house would you be more apt to go in and feel welcomed, appreciated, respected? What house would you go in and feel absolutely at peace, at ease, and be willing to share and have conversation and stay a while and come back? Well, your house is your vessel, your human, and Obviously, the house that you stay in. It could be your dorm. You could be rooming with someone else. It could be a room. It is your place that you're asking your spirit guides to come to and deliver a message. So make sure that you are doing your best to be non-toxic in that space, that you are using natural remedies, natural solutions, such as cleaning, natural solutions, um, plant-based uh, solutions, essential oils. Um, you, ha you have your plants inside your home, even if it's one plant, a very easy, um, hearty um, plant that is, you know, just easy to take care of, something like that. It just, it has na natural elements there. If you are addicted to synthetic meds, uh, recreational drugs, alcohol, um, any behavior that's toxic and you're addicted to it, you definitely want to seek out help. And, and there's a number of different therapies that for are out here for any number of addictions. So I encourage you to definitely seek it out. Um, seek out which option is best for you if you are trying to connect and hear from your spirit guides. And one last way that I would love to share with you is actually two, is prayer. And prayer is thank you. It's gratitude. It is worship. It's appreciation. It's respect. And it's showing that veneration before you receive what you're asking for or what you're looking for. It's humility. And it's an amazing energy. Another way is meditation. Meditation is a way to ground yourself and to calm your human to hear from your spirit guides. Meditating puts you in a state of reception and you're in a season to receive when you're meditating. And so our spirit guides absolutely recognize that as a precious moment to come in with your spiritual guidance. The very last way that I would love to share with you is very important. And anyone that's coached with me in our private sessions, you know this is definitely something that uh, is a must. We can't coach without it. And I truly uh, recommend this to everybody. And that is reflection. There's no way that you can get ahead in life and manifest anything without reflecting on the past. Oftentimes what I have found is that people want to escape the past, I myself included. However, there are some parts of our past that we absolutely have to learn from because without those parts of our past to stand on confidently we would not be able to move forward until we've learned those lessons. And we then turn that knowledge through the bumps and the bruises and we feel like we've boxed. We, we were in the ring 
you know, going toe to toe, how many rings felt like a thousand rings in one situation or a thousand rounds in one situation. And we got out of it. We have to learn from that. And we take that experience and we step on top of it to get further ahead. But we use it to elevate. And if we hadn't have had that to re time to reflect, how would we know what we learned? How would we know that we even have a stepping stone to stand on now? How would we know if not for reflection that we have grown, we are wiser now, and how would we know that we have something to bless someone else with? See, knowledge is power, but not unless we use it. And we don't go through these trials and tribulations in life without the obligation to pass on the knowledge as wisdom for someone else because we're all connected and even though the circumstances may be a little different someone else is walking your same path and when spirit comes to us and says hey you passed you won congratulations you got over that tough time. Now I want you to pass that wisdom that you learn, you now have obtained to someone else. When we don't do that and we hold on to the wounds and the trials and separation and the difficulty and the pain and we keep holding on to it and we don't use it, we inhibit our relationship and our blessings, our relationship with our spirit guides. We, we put a wall between ourselves and our spirit guides because it is so much better to give than to receive. And our spirit guides are giving to us answers to questions we've been praying for puzzle pieces to put together so that we manifest that soul's desire. Comfort from the pain. Solutions we couldn't think of on our own. They're delivering spiritual guidance sent from Divine Source. And they're giving to us so generously. It's so plentiful. If we're not giving back to others with that same energy, then we're out of balance with the universe. 